Hi, I'm Jim Taylor. Welcome to another video in this In Favor teaching series titled, Your Words Are Powerful, What God Says About What You Say. And this is video 18b, and it's the second of three on the power of declarations. We're using the same handout as for 18a. You, if you watched that video, you already have this handout. If not, go to InFavorResources.com, download for free the handout for video 18 in this series. So using that handout, we, we learned that declarations are biblically based faith statements about what is true, even though it may not be present or fully present in our experience yet. We saw some biblical characters who made declarations and what they declared came into being. What they said happened. Now, a common objection to declarations is simply this. You can't make something happen just by saying so. Otherwise, we'd all live on the moon. We'd all be kings. Well, this is based on a misunderstanding about the nature of declarations and the conditions for the decrees that God honors. So here are some conditions. These are at the bottom of your page, and they continue on to the back. There are three of them here. There may be more. These are just ones that I thought of. Number one, in Lamentations 3.37, Jeremiah asks this question, who can speak and have it happen if the Lord has not decreed it? Now, obviously, that question's expecting a negative answer. No one can do this unless the Lord has declared it. So you can jot down on your handout next to that one, next to that passage, it must be in God's will. It must be in God's will. That's the first condition for declarations to be valid and effective. So we do not make declarations independently of God, his power, his purpose, his will, his word. Not at all. If God isn't saying the same thing in heaven that you're saying on earth, then you're not going to get any fruit from this at all. So ask yourself, is this thing that I'm declaring, is it God's will or am I just walking in my own will. That's number one. Second condition. We move to James now in the New Testament for a couple of conditions that originally are for prayer, but I think they certainly apply to declarations as well. James 1, 6, but when you ask, when you declare, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind, and that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. If you don't believe what you're saying, you don't have a chance. So think about that confident assurance that David had when he faced up against that Goliath on the field of battle. Remember, Jesus told his disciples that they could use their powerful words in the same way that he used his. And they could do even more. They could speak to their mountains and make them move. So right down to this, next to this one, I must believe God can do this. That's the condition number two. I must believe God can do this. Now flip your page over. We're still in James, but at the top of your page there, James 4, 3. When you ask, when you declare, you do not receive because what doesn't work for unanswered prayer also doesn't work for unrealized declarations. You do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. What's wrong with your motives? that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You're abusing this, James says. You're saying, I want a Cadillac so that everybody can see that I have a Cadillac. Make a note next to this one. I must have the right reasons. That's the third condition. And I want you to know that speaking truth over your life in declarations is not proud and it's not selfish. It's not wrong in a, of itself in any way. It's your attitude and your motivations and your reasons that count here. I must have the right reasons. Now, in the box on your handout, there's a quote from someone that I admire. It's Chris Tigreen, and he says, One of the greatest gifts you can give the world is the power of your words. Use them wisely. Build up rather than tearing down. Speak life instead of destruction. Express truth and love. Dispense with mindless chatter. Let your words carry weight. Your mouth is an influential force. Use it well. I would add, in God's will, having faith, having the right reason. And he says, the people around you will thrive. So think about it. 
Your words are powerful. Your declarations can be powerful. When you are weak, you can say, I am strong, and you will become strong. God says so. You can confidently declare, there will be peace in my home, because you know that's God's desire, too. Instead of using our words to describe our lives, we can use them to change our lives. Think about this. In September 1962, President John F. Kennedy made a speech at Rice University in which he pledged, he promised, you might say he declared, that we would put a man on the moon in the next decade. Now, at the time, he said that we had no idea how to do this. It wasn't even possible. We lacked the technology necessary. We lacked the experience. We lacked the knowledge. We lacked the money. But all of those things followed all of them came to be at just the right time. All because a person with authority made a declaration. We will put someone on the moon in this decade, and actually it didn't even take 10 years. It happened seven years later in 1969, and it happened because he said it would. Next video. You have questions, objections, problems, confusion about declarations. We've got the answers. Hope to see you then.